things, which is Nova Yogurt, uh, uh, Hiran. Game? What do you mean Secrets. you're installing game content? <laughs> Hello? Probably the new patch with the new hero. Have you not played since there? No, I have played since, but it's telling me I'm installing game content. <laughs> there is new game content available. This is like me playing on Xbox. I get these same things. Have they changed the patching system? <laughs> I don't know. Because like, this Might is the same done. thing that happens when I play on Xbox. You get like installing game content. You can't fucking touch anything. All right, never mind. We're in now, I think. Awesome. I'll I'll load up the game as well, just so I can see if, whether, if there's eyes popping up. Um, and Thanks. if once we run out of uh, Dominion series to watch, I've recorded a bunch of matches so I can switch over to streaming to Discord, and then I could just put those on as in the background from the matches okay. earlier today. Um, some of them are actually really, really quite exciting. So at least I thought quite exciting. But, but that's what we're going to find out today, whether or not everybody thinks they're exciting. Um, yeah. Let's get. Let, well, first of all, you said the EU still going on right now. So let's it is going on right now. We have the losers final is active at the moment. So that is Inconsistus versus Nam Gloria. Um, mm. which See is if one of us have someone to spectate. Yeah. Um, if you got Hiran, Obu, Ficus. Yogurt or um, Rod, Just Ice, Mr. Living, Marachal. Let's, I'm not sure uh, if they started I'd love their to matches. I spectate yet. any of them, but my game just crashed. Okay, oh, never great. mind. Game is cursed. Let me reboot. Crap. Uh, I can uh, stream to Discord for the first okay. one if you want. Oh, so, yeah, there, there's, our f there's our first topic oh, that we could talk about with Frodo Esports. At least yeah. the <laughs> Delays. But no, yes. uh, once, we actually, once we actually get a little stability here, we can actually talk about what we've been meaning to, or at least the topic today, which is, for honor, is it an actually a viable like eSport to spectate and to watch? Or is it just something we follow because, you know, it's what we have? Because I know that that discussion did rage for a little bit, especially back in the day of, like, 1v1s, you know, Scott Judd Brawler's Guild and whatnot. Anyone remember those back in the day? Uh, I think before my time. Away. Yeah, I've I've seen the vods, but yeah, like didn't way... watch them when it was actually happening. Yeah, back in the day, the height of like for honor esports, quote unquote, if you will, was onesies and twosies. But two uh, two mans were a lot more fun to actually spectate because the one v ones ended up just being a turtle fest. There were some fun yeah. moments here and there whenever a fun bug was discovered or two particularly talented players. But normally, most of the fun came from just drama or rules officiating. Gone reared. So, I I only say that because I did read a post recently on Reddit that talked about this, asking why Dominion is the competitive mode of choice versus, say, anything else. Mm. And I think that's probably a good thing to at least talk about first. Like, why was Dominion landed on once Spectator came out to be the mode of choice, not, say, Breach or Twosies or Onesies? Or deathmatch or <laughs> tributes. The Fable 3v3 tribute tournament's not happening. Hey, I know. Uh, well, I mean, I think as the partly it's what people were playing in in, the, in like previous in the tournaments that were there. By the way, we have eyes up on um, Ficus and the people who are playing at the moment. So if you want to, you still um, can nice. spectate and breach, right? Uh, not breach, uh, tribute. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you yeah. can't spectate breach. You can't spectate a tribute. Can't no. Spe yeah, no, it's weird. Not a thing. Hey there, Blitz. How's it going? Yo. Yo. Spaniard. Hello. <laughs> yeah, so, um, I mean, I think partly why they picked it was just that A, everyone was playing it, and, and that was where the the competitive, competitive scene was. So it kind of makes sense to to be following them. Um, I mean, so I, th I think that's probably why I think that's probably part of the reason. Um, and yeah, it just has much more depth than the 1v1s, even, even with... Uh, even with the improvements the game has been making over, uh, repeatedly. And so, you know, 1v1s are a lot nicer now and a lot more interesting, but they're still highly reaction-based and there are not so many viable characters in 1v1s, so you don't see as many. Uh, you said we're spectating, uh, like, Just Ice, Mr. Living, Marichal, Rod, 50-50, right? Uh, yeah, 50-50 is not playing. So if you have Nova Obu or Hiran oh. Oof, Ah, okay, I figured out why I spectated someone and it's taking me to a breach match, because I clicked on Mr. Sheep instead. Different oh, yeah, entirely. just below here, and yeah. <laughs> um, as to why breach isn't played competitively, well, it just takes forever and ever. Um, 
and the mode is highly unbalanced in favor of attackers at the at least at the high end high levels of skill so yeah. um despite what ubisoft tells I don't think you, we can really it is cute to attack us they tell you it's defenders but if you go that's that's low mmr mid mmr but if you look at what the what the high level people can do it's highly skewed against attackers yeah and we will point out in chat yeah you can't do tiebreakers because there's no stats on the there's no i mean there's an individual match score but it doesn't really you know that was probably the only way you could really do a tiebreaker is based on the overall match score but then there's no way of knowing like you know, does it give you does it give you an overall score per team in breach again i can't remember i feel like that was one of the things it didn't do no um, no there is no individual like this team has scored more because that, that yeah. there's no tiebreaker setup necessarily yeah you'd have to like add up each player's comp scores and just that would be a nightmare really to do um, yeah so it's dominion just kind of ended up falling in place to be the the mode to watch you know, two versus two brawl tournaments I know are still ran by certain orcs to this day, and some duel tournaments too, because you know there's always going to be that sect who have came to for honor for that one versus one fantasy, and they want to try and really push that limit and fair play to them. But in terms of a competitively viable situation, it's it's that all the way. Yeah, and here we are now. I'm actually finally able to navigate my way through. There's an improvement that can be made to spectator to be able to actually see the status of a match as you click over it because one of the big contributors of delays is just ho hovering and waiting to see if an eye is a correct eye that's always fun yeah that's always fun um uh i mean spectator mode we'll get i guess we can definitely get into spectator mode a little bit about the, yeah. the quirks and it's foibles the backbone of, it. of how we you know consume for on a resport so we kind of have to yeah i mean it, uh, it, it what it is it is now i mean it's interesting that we had like dominions was definitely Already the competitive mode, even even when you couldn't have uh, you know tournament anybody spectator other than the players, and so you'd have to have people streaming. Yeah, those um, I didn't like those though. Like a couple people asked me at some time to produce like, hey, could you do a four versus four tournament, just jumping from stream to stream? But I hated that stuff because yeah, you can technically get a feed, but it's always from one player's perspective. Yeah, yeah, and also there is you know a small risk, at least from the broadcasting side, that. If, say, you're spectating a player and things go wrong, you may get some gamer language. Let's oh, yeah. <laughs> so you yeah. need to be able to have a nice, clean feed. And let's go from recent position. I'll boot my actual stream up now for on a 60 FPS, 1080p. Boop. Here we are. Okay, Going let me see if I fuck it up. Let me see if I can stay for today. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. If not, I can just boot the backup. Yeah, I mean, Timo, if, if, if you're uh, kinking the kick, Messing the stream up, you can always just go into um, uh, you can just turn it off what and watch on Twitch instead. Um, by the way, you don't I have amazing internet, I don't understand. FPS. You don't need to stream at 60 FPS, we are at 30 FPS on Twitch, so oh, FPS okay, I'll reset that one moment, please. Yeah, stop streaming. Sure. Thanks for the warning on that one. I'm just used to setting it to 60. Ah, that's good. 30, 70, there we are. Boom, high quality verb. All right, so it's... Kama language is the best language in the world. It may be Kintama, however, there is the unfortunate habit of sponsors do not like gamer language, and that's a slightly important element. Yeah, that is. If you want, like the, you know, the scene to ever go beyond being um, like very, very niche, you do have to, do have to. I mean, we we do have to get sponsors in at some point. Um, I think yeah. it's quite a long way from that because you need to get like big viewership numbers to get decent sponsors but um so i'm thinking when's the last time a tournament had a sponsor and i think it might have been all the way back also that was a dub for nobu hiring yogurt and flux yeah so that's a uh, Gloria take i think that's the first match in their set yeah that's the first one it's one nil mm -hmm. to um Nam Gloria at the moment yeah, I think the last For Honor tournament that was broadcast to an audience that had sponsors might have been all the way back when Panda Gaming was doing one versus or two versus two and one versus one broadcast. This was back when you were getting like Cypher PK versus Sonic Fox. Wow. Okay, like so this is ancient one stuff. Yeah, stuff. Yeah. I don't think that rings many bells to to the viewers we have right now. 
Ah, well, I mean, the, the, point being, was... the point of this being, it's been a long time since we've had sponsors, so because of that, we you, you having the spectator available to us, so we don't have to watch someone stream to get a, a Dominion tournament, so it can be nice and clean, is the preferred method. It's probably the only reason why we even have bigger streams to this day, because we mm -hmm. have our own spectator. Yeah. Also, um, um, it, it, can I just... I'm mm -hmm. not sure if you. I'm not sure if you understand me, uh, understand me properly. There, uh, Bob, you can stream at 1080p. We're recording at 1080p, but you, you we don't Discord need to go on. 60 fps. You, you can oh, just leave whoops. it 1080p 30 fps. That's absolutely fine. Can it do that? I thought uh, I could only do. Yeah, one. I can do 1080 yeah. 60. Uh, just on the Discord stream. Uh, 10, if 10, 80, my 30. PC will even let me access my Discord, PC please. I think you can only I set it to like. Link for another. Oh, that either way. Um, one moment. Stream quality uh, change to 1080, 30 FPS. There we are. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, Lovely, jolly. Myself. So yeah, we're we'll waiting for the next um, eye to shut for Just Ice. Um... Yeah, I think it it might be a good idea to set a base for what expectation. Because I can ramble all day about like the past, but what do people here think of what spectating? A for honor tournament is like right now like not just from watching the game but like the production side of it what are the things people like and what are the things people do not like i mean the delays are definitely probably one of the i don't i don't understand how it's why for honor tournaments always do have such big delays between matches but i mean i think i mean it's also partly to do with the um you can't do anything like as asynchronously I mean, there's a bit of asynchronousy. You can ha have um. Yeah, our English people gotta pray. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's pretty annoying that there's no official cast of the qualifiers. Says diplomat. Yeah, it's all unofficial stuff. Like for NA, Norgoz has been leading the charge on that. He's doing some excellent work. Yeah. Um. Clutch has been casting as well. I agree. I think it's they. It's to. At least for the official broadcast, it's a it's a kind of budget thing as well. They have to get people. Uh, I, mean, I think it costs them costs them quite a lot of money to do those high quality um, broadcasts, like the ones and we have for the for the for the majors. Um, and also, it means you have different issues as well. Like if we if in the qualifiers, if we run into a match where somebody we can't spectate because um, there's a there's a problem with it, or you know. Sometimes, as we had mentioned, there are bugs with spectator mode. Um, then it doesn't really matter because, you know, we're just unofficial people. It's just mildly annoying. Whereas it can really hold up the whole broadcast. And like, they like to have schedules and things with broadcasts. The you know, so you go watch straight from one match, the next match, the next match, and also not to miss things. So, so with a kind of like bracket-like tournament that's running all in one day, you'd have like. Okay, we 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 jumped into like the first match of this set, uh, and then the next one was not able to be spectated. So we go to like another set that's going on, and at, there in like the third match. So right now we've just jumped into the second match, um, and obviously if we were doing an official stream, that would be you wouldn't really Jarring. want to start off with uh, you know with one nil on the screen. Um, oh, there is a question from Twitch chat. Loxaman asks, do people who win the tournament get paid? I assume you're asking about the Dominion series? Yes, there is a prize yes, for us. Yes, yes. And for, even for, you know, if you, if you just get into the majors, you're guaranteed to get some some prize. Ooh, that is a... The stream's a bit laggy. I think I think this, bit is, laggy. this is, I think this is oh. Timo. No offense. Is it? <laughs> Wait. You can just watch it on uh, Twitch and, yeah. and listen on the on Discord instead. Wait, my stream's lagging? Oh, uh, uh, it's just no, the it's Discord fine. stream being yep, a bit... There we go. No, it's it... fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hang on a minute. I'm not even streaming to Twitch. How is it lagging? No, no, okay. it, it's, it's oh, no, it's... So we're restreaming from Discord to Twitch. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and yeah, Discord unfortunately has bugs where um, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem to pick up the, uh, the, the quality is based on the person with the worst internet. And look at that. Uh, something that's notable to, for today is there are berserkers in these matches. Yes, I mean, two have teams berserkers. have been running berserkers, which is really quite interesting. Oh god, this bug is fun. Uh, yeah, the one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight are swapped. What the yeah. hell? <laughs> yeah. So the, I don't know why it happened between this one and last 
last week, I guess. Um, this is now they're now swapping around. Um, oh. Spectator is one of these annoying things that you don't get many bug fixes. Well, they don't seem to come very rapidly for Spectator mode. Um, hmm. Unfortunately, Rod got a nice deflect then and then didn't do anything with it, and instead just died. Yeah. Um, Might have been paranoid that he was going to get hit by the person next to him. Yeah, yeah probably. Made sense, made sense yeah. Um, I parried in that sense. No. I mean, with of the the match commentary as well. So we we'll just try and keep it. Up. Yeah. So, um, Jones, what do you what what have your experiences in like? Because you've done quite a lot of twos casting, right? Uh, yes, I have. And uh, what are your ex what are your sort of thoughts on D Dominion being the um? Because you haven't got have you Dutch Dutch casting of Dominion yourself or? Um, that's actually, I think, what I have more experience with. Twos is definitely my less preferred mode. Um, typically, when I was casting twos, it was with Ceresu. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'd have these, these five-hour tournaments that would go with, you know, maybe two or three great teams that had a chance to win the tournament. Uh, and it really was kind of difficult sometimes to make it interesting because... Of course, it's these great high-level players that are competing, and twos isn't the worst mode. You know, you, there, there's team fighting, and uh, there's definitely skill and strategy behind it, but it's not nearly as entertaining and deep as Dominion, mm. uh, because you've got all these different systems to worry about. You know, you need to know your rotations, renown, keeping track of enemy feet cooldowns, ganks, and there's 101 things that you can go over and are all very important in a match, whereas when you're spectating a brawl tournament, it's just like great job covering for your teammate there or nice mm. bash to set up for the heavy uh it's <laughs> it's really just much more boring honestly yeah, yeah it's um... interesting because because i definitely get the impression from some people in like you know casual players have a tendency to say that it's the only round and uh, um that dominion is really boring to watch i mean it's they don't have it's they don't understand the the depths of play that's going on but it's still a fairly um, common complaint if you... Wow, how did Marichal... How are you that? alive? Yeah, that was really... I don't think, even, even for 75% damage reduction, I didn't think he had enough left then, but hmm. that's going to cost him, I think. It might cost him this team fight. Yeah, they lost the point. Oof. Shout out to the Berserkers, though. That's nice to see. The reason why... Some, yeah. oh, actually, uh, Kitama's in the voice text. The reason why some teams are running Zerk, according to Antonio, is because he has a better synergy with Demon Ball. Oh! They're running okay. Berserker just because of that one maneuver. Okay. I mean, interesting. Well, I'm gonna have a... Sorry, I'll... Like, I've got um, something to land in the background, so you could... Okay. Uh, you'd leave the conversation, mate. Yes, the... That's an interesting little thing, because... Yes, ganking in front doesn't have a million paths. It's often why you see ganks end up being the same thing. So, a single maneuver dictating a pick. Ow, that's scummy. He also said Zerg does Warlord, but better. Ah, right. Although, that's actually a fair point. Like, circling back I mean... to the topic at large. Oh, welcome back, Spaniard. Yeah, sorry. Um, Like, thinking about this, like... Dropping all the pretenses of, like, which mode is better, in our opinion, all that. Talking about it from a casual point. Is the For Honor, in the state it's in, between the way the game is played, the picks, the spectator, is it something you could show anyone and have them have a fun time watching it as a casual spectator? Because a big advantage to actually having something be watchable and have lots of people want to tune in is to have something that's fun to watch even if you have no clue like for example to take other you know fighting games i would personally love watching fighting game tournaments whether it's like Mortal Kombat, marvel vs capcom whatever because normally the commentary and the game itself is simple enough to understand and then you get moments like this where you can see someone's head get cut off but if we just watch you know a standard if there are team fight going on right now nope just more murder can someone just give us a team fight please here we are if you're watching this as a brand new person to For Honor, can you have fun watching this and understand what's going on? I guess is the question. Um, yeah. I think it's certainly possible um, either way. It's it, it definitely helps to have some knowledge of the game, especially because you know even players that do play the game maybe don't have full knowledge of like how target switching works, etc. But 
I mean, For Honor on its own looks really pretty, and the animations that the teams do look, uh, I, I mean, again, just really great. So I think that it does a good job of conveying what's happening in fights and who's winning and why. So I, I think it does make enough sense in that respect, but I don't think players are going to, you know, remotely grasp how the game is played based on watching matches if they've never touched it before. Yeah. Hmm. Sorry, I keep on, I keep on mute myself because there's a um, blender going on in the background. But no yeah, um, I mean, I've had friends who, some of my friends, like my real life friends, I have a few of them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, shocking. Yeah, some people. You, even if you don't believe me, I do have a few, and they have uh, occasionally watched, you know, Colombian football for and stuff. I tell them about it, and they occasionally watch some of these tournaments. And they they said they you know enjoyed it and it was it was fun to watch. So I think there is to a certain extent you you can enjoy seeing what's going on. Like you have moments like what just happened there. Somebody just gets fucking glocked from off screen with a longbow, and you, and you see them get shot with a longbow, and that that's kind of fun. Um, there are there are ledges, people falling off. You can always see health bars, which I think is actually something that's quite a major importance for hmm. for the, the you know. Whereas in um, I think something that Fortnite actually has over some fighting games is that it's very clear to see you know the, the health of the opponent and just by looking at them because the health bars directly above them. Whereas in a two v two fighting game, sorry, one v one fighting game, where the health bars on top of the screen. Unless you watch from the beginning of the round and you know which the characters' names go where, it actually can be quite hard to know who's. Well, at least maybe me, just me saying this. It can be quite hard to know who's, who's which health bar belongs to which person. Um, so, for I think has that going for it. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'd be very curious to see what happens if. Ubisoft tried to put For Honor on, discounting, you know, all the baggage For Honor has to the competitive setting, just the game itself onto the main channel broadcast for, say, the Grand Finals and see what the reactions are like in chat. Is it going to be full of people who just play For Honor or are there for the drops? Or is it going to be new people coming in for the first time to check the game out? Because that that's one of the key things for the whole idea of, you know, retention and bringing new people in is... You know, if someone watches CSGO for the first time, watches a major, and sees, you know, Astralis pull off an absolutely ridiculous comeback, would they get inspired by seeing the same thing in this, or would they just see, oh, it's just a bunch of people slapping each other, how do I do this? They'll go into Dominion and potentially have a completely different experience. Or at least they won't feel like what they're watching is conducive to what they're going to play if they decide to play the game. Yeah, I mean, I think the the lack of single pick in Dominion doesn't help this the, these issues. Like, like, if you go into people go like, why are, why aren't they running like four Gokies? <laughs> so I don't think that that can can be a bit of a like the further the <laughs> basic like uh, oh user experiences is from. That's Parry. The, the further the basic user experience is from like what's played competitively is I mean I don't know how, how what it's like in other games but you know Overwatch has single pick right so hmm. you're always going to be like you will see the same characters when you if you played in tournaments as you would if you go and play a match um, and I think that's the same with other games right I'm not, not the hmm. most experienced yeah to an extent it's like uh... For example, Jones, have you had like anyone come into chat during your numerous 2v2s and say that like watching this tournament made me and a friend want to pick up trying, you know, twos a little bit more serious? Um, I, I've seen plenty of comments like that. Yeah, I, I think it hmm. helps a lot of players uh, see like, like, like players that have already experienced the game a little bit. They'll see twos at a high level and go, this doesn't look that hard. Or this looks fun, or something, and they'll go, okay, so I want to get more invested in this, but uh, it, it's not too frequent. Yeah, and admittedly, there is a case to be made of that's not the job of the competitive, like, you know, spectator sport for it to be a conversion tool, but it's definitely some of the better top end 
you know, more populated scenes, that is an element. The streams almost turn into a way to start feeding people into the system because they see, oh, that was cool. I want to try and be like that. Yeah. I mean, that's what, like, in esports have always been a sort of marketing thing, right, to a certain extent. And that's why they, that's why companies put money into them to, you know, and why Ubisoft is sponsoring and running official tournaments now is because they want people to be, to see it, see, wow, this is cool. And, and you know, pick up the game and play it. Uh, by the way, that was I think that was Nam Gloria yeah, took the grand finals. The is grand finals now. Which will be Our collectors Nam Gloria. Yep. So they were the favourites. They I think these were the two teams that were favourites to get to the grand finals um, in this one. But they've had some really close matches. There's not been a, like the whole bracket has been. I mean, it, uh, there's a few two O's and but most of it's been two ones and like, like you know even from the first matches they've been they've been close so i'm interested to see and oh, nam gloria came up from uh come up from the losers bracket yeah so oh wait no sorry we, this isn't am i getting this no grand finals three? is this sort of l collectors nam gloria nam gloria got knocked out by inconsistus in the semis in the winners and then and then beat them just now in the, in the losers finals well yeah. why are you guys doing this discussion during the tournament uh this is just where the time ended up yeah, we'd have the dojo this this time every week, um, and the EU tournament is still going at the same time. So, like, we, we, the aim of this isn't really to cast the EU tournament. It was to be talking about, um, like, for honor as a as an esport. And when this is over, I'll, I'll, I've got some matches from earlier on the tournament which I rec- which I've got recorded, which we can, we can play in the background and and yeah. have something hey, on the screen whilst we're talking. It's a two-in-one special, though. It's a pseudo watch party and this at the same time. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. if anything, it's nice to have visual aids to sort of talk about watching this kind of thing. Because, you know, actually, you mentioned a good point earlier, though, Spaniard, how there was expected teams. Something I've noticed with uh, For Honor as an esport is there were, there's been certain periods in time where one could almost with an oracle level of accuracy, predict who was going to get the dub in certain scenes for mm. a while. You knew it once you saw certain teams show up, it was, oh, that team's making it through. And they made yeah. it through. Yeah. Upsets were very rare. And do you, yeah. think, do you guys think that contributed potentially to people necessarily not wanting to watch? Because they just knew, oh, like, you know, five steps ahead is in there, or score in the boys is in there, or whatever... Yeah, NA or EU or whatever particular team yeah. on top at the time, they just didn't want to watch. Well, I don't, I, I don't know because they're sometimes. I mean, I I don't really have a huge amount of experience of, of other esports, but I know that that in, um, in other sports, there have been periods of times where one team, you know, is incredibly dominant. I mean, I I I guess you could say, uh, the Tour of, in the Tour de France back in like the early two thousands. Lance Armstrong and uh, the U.S. Postal Team were just w- winning constantly, and I mean, obviously, ended up the, to be the case that he was cheating. But but people were still tuning in to watch their like the person they knew win, they knew would win, win big. And I think it's the same thing with you know when in Wimbledon when in the tennis when you know uh, Federer was like really at the peak of the game and there was nobody who was anybody know he was anywhere near him so even though he would like crush the competition people would tune in to see see that display of of skill and, I, and you see the same thing happens people watch clutch it's one of the i guess one of the most popular streamers of for honor and his team it was for the longest time the the team that was always winning and and they i'm sure he would say they still are um although they didn't did the recent major didn't didn't back that up, but we'll see if they can reclaim their reclaim their crown. I don't think necessarily having one highly dominant team always stops people watching, as long as the as long as the matches are still fun and people appreciate how they are. Does that make any sense? I don't know. Yeah. Again, I don't have a huge amount. As of long as it avoids an issue where people are just watching to see who comes second and third. Because I, yeah. I do remember seeing in Twitch chats a couple times that people were just watching to see the earlier matches because that's where some interesting upsets can be or some really fun picks and comps. But the yeah. further you get towards the end, it's the same teams, the same compositions over and over and over. And that was a legitimate criticism for a long time, especially yeah. back in the Toosies era. 
when the you know brawls were the in thing, you would always oh, yeah. see Just be... the same people and the same compositions. And arguably, the composition thing holds true to an extent now, but there is some reflavoring naturally because there is more pe- more heroes in the game. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Well. Well. I mean, Goki's not even been in every um, team that like in this tournament. I'd say the top the the top four teams were uh, Osemix's team. So El, El Collectors, Nam Gloria, uh, the STD2, and Inconsistus, and actually extra cool Gachias were also um, uh, the the Helvgen team also played really well, um, and also in like the, the the running for the top five. And amongst those, there was one team I think that wasn't running Goki. So whilst there is at the moment like. And, and and even even okay, one team that's always running Goki, like you always see a Goki in every map, in every match, is better than having always having Warlord, Centurion, and Warmonger in every match, which was in the the um, twenty twenty Dominion series. Yeah, the twenty twenty Dominion series. Um, and oh, yeah. and would you ha- there was also you know also see Kensei. Um, was it was it? And then sometimes they swap. There was one like swap out for Gladiator came swapped out for. Century on one team earlier on and that kind of thing like overall overall at least right now the number of uh, number of characters in the meta is significantly higher than it was even a year ago um even seven months ago so that definitely helps i'm not sure we and I, and there are mirror comps and i think the finals will be no the finals not big because um namcoria have they have a gladiator Oh, no, they got the, they got Berserker, the doy. Um, so yeah, this is already more variant, uh, more variability than than it has been in the past. And I definitely, I definitely remember seeing like in Twitch chat people complaining, oh, that there are, um, oh, we're just seeing the same characters on over and over, over again, which it was a valid, valid concern, complaint, and it is still to a certain extent, but is less so. I would, yeah. They were playing with pick and ban system for a while in the, mm. in like scrims, but they were but that was before the Dominion series was active. And I think again, the the problem holding Ubisoft back for doing that is that in well, it makes the tournament slower to run, especially for new players who haven't who have to have to work out like what the, how how to do this pick and ban system like that. You won't believe how difficult people difficult people find the picking and banning of maps, which is not really that complicated. And then add in a like a fair a two stage pick and ban system for for characters that has that everybody has to know what it, what it is before they can do it. It can be a real problem. Um, yeah, we uh, tried that on Xbox for scrims, like around the time that the pick and ban system came out and was being used, and. There were so many confused people, like longtime competitive players that just were having a kind of like confusing level of difficulty with just figuring out how to use the pick and ban system. So I can't imagine how it would be for newer players that are used to matchmaking where, you know, there are barely any rules. Yeah. And and the, and there's no tool in the game for, for streamlining this thing. I think like uh, what uh, I'm pretty sure that there's pick and ban systems in the game for... Um, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I just I got random random ping from somewhere. Are there are there are pick and, are there pick and ban systems for characters in like in some um, uh, here in MOBAs and in Rainbow Six? Are they? Uh, yeah, they've got inbuilt stuff, and that kind of thing. If it's going to be implemented, it would need to be implemented in game. Because remember uh, way back, not way back when, but a good ways back, that there was a tournament mode in the game. It was there was a full bracket system. It was what ranked was for a while, and I think it's I, does ranked in still use that system where you're like assigned no. to a team. No, not anymore. No. I don't think it's been used for over a year. It's longer than that. Yeah, even... they got stripped. Out. Yeah. Well, yeah, they, like I, that... I remember enjoying that actually, and it was kind of fun, but they. They, yeah. they said they were going to bring it back on weekends, and then that just never happened. So I don't know what's yeah. going on with that. That's because we're talking about all this like stuff, like pick and bans, like externally having problems with it. If we want that stuff to be imported improperly, it would have to be 
inside the game itself, simple and ready to use. In an ideal world, you follow the like the ideas that hell, even technically Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has set up is like the uh, the lowest level. They have a t you can be in a tournament in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, beginning to end, brackets sorted out everything in client on your Switch. You don't have to worry about anything else. In League, they've got pick and ban system set up in game. Smite, whatever, it's all set up in game. Even Siege, you know, their six pick system, uh, that's only available in pro lobbies, I believe, but. The six pick system is there, and pick and ban exists in regular ranked play. So, if we expect, uh, I would have to ask: Has pick and ban been pretty? Uh, has been? Is it regarded as the way forward for competitive? First of all, I should ask: Has have most people sort of come to a a consensus on that? I mean, I couldn't answer that question myself because I don't not in the you know competitive scene. Well, um, uh, Blitz, have you? Maybe you. And Blitz and Yarl, you might know, know a bit more about about that. What are your opinions on on uh, having pick and ban as part of like the regular move set, the regular <clears throat> set, regular tournament? Well, they or tried it in For Glory for a bit, like before the Dominion series was announced, um, and I think it worked pretty well. It was really fun to to do that because like so many more comps were played. I like the way they kind of implemented it, but they wouldn't do that. Like we stopped doing it because you know the Dominion series coming out. You know you can't. They don't have it implemented. So I think if it was part of the game, I'd like it. That's exactly what I heard Scorebrand say about it as well. Was that if it were the way the Dominion series was run, they'd love it. But it just it, they were working with the the testing of it, and then Dominion series twenty twenty got announced, and it's just like okay, well we shouldn't be practicing this anymore because it's not relevant. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think, yeah, it's, it's definitely a thing that people would d definitely take up uh, and embrace if it was made an official tool, uh, official part of the game. But then for it to be, it's, it's kind of almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy, isn't it? For it to, the developers to see that to make it an official part of the game, they have to know that there's a desire for it, and the desire is not, we, and <laughs> like in terms of like spectate for the spectators to 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 want to watch that and if it's not shown they can't know that it's what's wanted does that make any sense like... yeah that makes sense because like to even boil that down further and to sort of slightly pivot a bit you know all of us here we're you know we are here talking about for honor esports in a discord you know nine o'clock ten o'clock at night in europe we we enjoy this it's a, it's a you know it's easy to say however the casual layperson or just someone playing the game for the sake of it may not give the slightest of hex about it. So, is the competitive base for this game not necessarily there for where improvements would elect it to be made? Would the Ubisoft developers' time be better served elsewhere? Because I know I would personally want a lot of changes, and the Dominion series is trying to drum up that, drum up the hype. However, sometimes I get the feeling that the competitive scene is trying to force itself into a into a room where it's not welcome. I sometimes Honestly, get that um, vibe. Just put it in custom games. Just put it as like an option, so we can we can do it in tournaments. We don't have to do it in casual play. Just like single pick isn't an option in casual play. Mm, yeah, that I'm might be that. the best compromise. Yeah, I mean, I'd I'm love not to expecting pick ban in casual play or anything. Yeah, I mean. I um, I'd love to see more options in customs. I mean, I think that's personally, I say this is one of the things that I think holds back more people from getting involved in in competitive play is that they don't have any kind of progress. All the pro all the in-game progression stuff is is via matchmaking, and and if you want to improve and do customs and train with people, or even even duel against a friend to improve like that, you can't do it without stopping your progress through the game. You don't get any get any rewards and, and and so much of the game is built around incentivizing you to like you know get battle pass points and, and grind for steel and that kind of stuff and mm. get xp and you have to choose to not partake in any of that if you want to play competitively which i think is a big barrier to entry for a lot of people um no all right. Oh, we got an eye. Hang on a minute. Oh, wonderful. Um, Norgos yeah. just messaged me. He's going to come and join us in a bit when he's uh, when he's up. I think it's late, yes, the, uh, early for him. <laughs> yeah, that right there just sort of 
demonstrated something. The classic waiting for the eye delays in proper tournament play. Of course, the uh, only so much can be done, but I'll... Only the sort of the top end tournaments have the time to be able to make those little between the scene VTs that we saw, you know, of the players, you know, talking about their experiences being interviewed by Vivid Naz and whatnot. But for more community stuff, there is an unfortunate plague of, you know, sit and wait for eyes. I'll admit, I do not have the personal funds to be able to make hype packages in between. So the middle <laughs> is somewhat yeah. on me, but. I mean, it's a difficult thing for anybody to do is to have something entertaining to. to like to make a, a blank screen of a list of names <laughs> exciting mm. to 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 see is is going to be quite difficult for anybody um and yeah not having i mean when when these kind of tournaments which is a much more sort of a it, in many ways the way that this uh, the qualifier setup is not is not for viewers it's for people competing and mm. then the majors are the things that that they broadcast and that's why they have like the matches all set up so we see all of the matches and try and make it as enjoyable for viewers as possible um so it's 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 difficult to judge how like a community level tournament or a something like this where it's not it's just it's not really for viewers put as much um it's difficult to judge how how good that is is for viewers when it's not really intended for that. Again, again, I don't try to make any sense. It's a little bit like, you know, uh, not everybody can put on a football tournament and have like, you know, it be have like cheerleaders. Uh, if American football, you know, have, not every game is going to have cheerleaders and and hmm. and big screen stuff and fireworks and starters shows and all that kind of shit. Um, it's only going to only like the big big competitions. Um, oh, but well. wait, I'm a cheerleader. I'm cheering for uh, Toadie's team right now. <laughs> I even did. have a copy paste set up just in case. <laughs> Let's go, Tote Mine. Yay. <laughs> what the? <Yep. laughs> Amazing. Gosh. Well, wonderful. <laughs> okay, so well, we before we go that. too far off the rails here, <laughs> before we go too despondent, Weeaboo of uh, talking in Twitch chat mentioned something about about balance and seeing Timo here in the chat has sort of reminded me. What? If I wonder, yeah, excuse I, me, I wonder. How, it, I'll explain to me. Yeah, I wonder how much Im viewer enjoyment would go up if we saw significantly more character variety. Of course, like for me, even seeing one or two strange picks gets me excited on commentary. But like, if we saw things like Shinobi, you know, come in frequently and be something we see. You know, all the time. I imagine we may even see Shinobi if he comes in in the testing ground state into competitive. Actually, that's a side note. Uh, Timo, testing ground Shinobi, did you get a chance to play him? Yes, quite a lot. Is that competitively viable? Uh, without the bug, no. No? No. Okay. His gank is like not fast enough or uh, good enough. And Sickle still puts himself in recovery. You can get a free GB when he sickles people. Uh, you can block. And you can only backflip out of it, which also puts in recovery. So yeah, it's not a good ganking tool. Hmm. Okay, so testing ground Shinobi notwithstanding, it will be nice to see more character variety. Because for, ex like for example, oh, so I'm, there. Ouch. I'm fairly it sure... It would be okay. Not, not amazing, not terrible. It would be okay. Okay. Like, because I'm fairly... Yeah, sorry. No, you don't. Okay, no, no, no. I'm... okay, I'm fairly sure if Shaolin were viable and spotted in a tournament, that would be pretty hype. One, Megayla would come back at the speed of light, at least to watch that stream. But two, I think that having a character as visually exciting as Shaolin would be something people would want to legitimately watch, because he does some pretty hype stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, I, mean, I think people want people want to see the characters they play represented on on the you know on the streams and on in, in competitions when they watch it. They, if they if they tune in, and they watch. Okay, I don't play any of these characters, like oh. especially if you're an uh, a a newer player who you don't play that many characters, hmm. then it, you're like, okay, I can't. You want to say, oh, I can't do this, uh, but you 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 can't because you don't play any of the characters and you don't know what you don't really know what's going on. Um, 
And again, the lack of single pick in regular play, or at least you know, if there was a ranked dominion that was closer, that would also, um, you know, would also be something that would you'd want to would be closer to um, people would be more experienced with other characters because they they'd 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 see them. Um, you know, the matches would look closer to their actual matches, and so they'd probably hmm. be more inclined to pay attention to that. Yeah, um, and like even if sorry, go on. No, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Like, Eve, what were you going to say something, Jones? Oh, I wasn't. Sorry, I scratched my mic. Okay, no problem. But yeah, like, of course, you know, to take an example from another game, not every. N no one is going to be playing at the same level as, like, Faker Z from back in the day, where, you know, look at the moves. What is that sort of play from way back in the day? But uh, people seeing a Z going completely ham may inspire them to want to actually pick up their characters. So being able to see, you know, Shaolin's coming in shinobis orochis you know especially you know really good anti-ganking with those kind of characters i can already imagine if uh yoshi i i always forget kyoshin so i just call him yoshi <laughs> ends up becoming somehow viable and played a lot in tournaments there's going to be a decent bit of hype for that because you know every competitive match all of a sudden could look like a faram anti-gank video that people love so much yeah um and i think that is one of the the I mean, you see a lot of people complaining. It moves quite handily onto the topic of ganking. Um, you do see a lot of people complaining, like, oh, this is just... I mean, there's the infamous Taibu hit-stun series complaints. Mm. Oh, this is just hit-stun, they're just ganking. Um, and Frona does have, on like... You, to a certain extent, you have to have ganks be possible and be unfavorable, because, I mean, if it were... If you were disadvantaged to be in a two v one instead of a one v one, that would uh, that that would make the it would just destroy team modes. You, you, ganks have to be able to be. It, it has to be better to have two players than one player on your team. Yeah. Otherwise, you just kiss goodbye to a, the team mode being a thing. Um, but there are like people do dislike seeing like I mean ganks over and over, again, especially if it's the same gank pulled off and they do like having like clutch clutch uh comebacks which which is which are which are rare in in front of played at the top level they do happen but even when the and even uh, like a good comeback in a, in a in a good anti-gank is when you just get like when somebody gets revenge and manages to stall for long enough for their teammates to show up which isn't necessarily exciting to watch um and mm. potentially something does need to be done about uh, revenge or ganking in general. To yeah, try and make revenge it. stalling. That's holding. a thing. Revenge, revenge holding. holding. Is, I mean, that revenge has so many problems, but I think it does make the game less watchable for um, for, for people. And you know, it's definitely a common complaint. It's a Even big if... orange stoplight to a fight potentially. Once someone's got revenge and they're holding it like that. Yeah, and then you and then you just see them. They like they they back off, and they and then it, it sort of turns into like a almost a turn based kind of thing. You know, you, you you attack until they get revenge, and then they hold revenge, and then they can attack, and then they and then they pop revenge, and then you roll away, or you you, you do a sort of um, you know a move which pins them for a long time. Noodles, get off that. Um, Kitty. Sorry, my <laughs> my cat. She I think she gets jealous when I'm talking to anybody not her. And ah. uh, jumps up and, and wants my attention. <laughs> oh, that's a fair point by Diplomat, actually. Off topic, at least on terms of ganking for a moment. But yeah, the unofficial broadcast for people like Clutch and Norgoz. Yeah, I think those should be tapped a bit by Ubisoft to be official things. Because, for example, like there isn't that much coverage of the NA stuff because it's on the NA time zone. And Norgoz is pretty much one of the only sources. I And he's been putting out content incredibly consistently some pretty good stuff too i think it might be a prudent move by ubisoft to go hey uh could we just like license your stuff yeah and or just they have could... it be the go-to source Same i mean they Clutch. could just host it right like yeah even a can, simple host uh, on twitch that that would be kind of kind of big um i remember they did a while ago uh height sorry i just saw kempo kids come on and then i started, started reading it out uh, a while ago, they did have like a bit of time after Warriors Den where they would where they would host foreign streamers, didn't they? Um, 
Yeah, they did, they did raids on people, but that stopped after a bit. Yeah, I mean, do you think there's a reason for that, or they just uh, just was just something they're not interested just in doing Just moved on anymore? from the idea, I guess? Yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't send the f official For Honor chat anywhere. There are a lot of uh, weird people in there. I wouldn't send it. No, no. <laughs> but, like, if you want them to be... If you want the the competitive to be you know seen and and enjoyed by more people they, they do you do need to have like that visibility for, for, the, for the player base and the community as a whole it's not enough for it to just be it, it, it's 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 a problem when it's only seen as like oh something that only a few people care about it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that then yeah nobody's going to care about it because um because nobody cares about it does that make any sense yeah it ends up being a case of it ends up sitting its own little discreet walled garden that no one really wants to pay attention to because no one knows what's going on in the walled garden. What is going on here? <laughs> uh, except Mix tried to drop attack, but he got ledge, well, uh, ledge cucked. I'm not sure. Oh, is Yoga gonna get? <laughs> this is this. It's funny you see these on you see these on Beachhead. These are like a uh, warlord mirrors on the top of on, on top of point b except now it's not a world mirror it's a warlord versus the warlord replacement character <laughs> um hmm. uh, which oh, is, i don't think i've ever seen this in this map before map court nice yeah. on a on a positive note though real quick we're talking about a lot of negatives one really nice thing with competitive recently map variety has gone up like away from the traditional like temple garden citadel gate you know with the introduction of things like harbor and uh, beachhead, and even occasional high fort we've seen prop up every now and then. I think very I rarely. I don't think it's been a high fort played since. Uh, like there wasn't another high fort in the last major. Uh, oh, I, think, okay. I think high fort get, gets banned every time. Um, ah, okay. I, I think map variety. Map variety is a little bit better than it used to be, but I I still don't know if I would say that it's like it feel doesn't feel varied. I don't know. I, Maybe my maybe it's my own personal bias of having to commentate so many Temple Garden two v twos back in the day that my brain <laughs> is just stuck there. Maybe that's a me problem. Like, I mean, actually, should... what do you I guys mean, think? Like, yeah. is map variety good? Is it in a? Do we want more maps? Like, what do we think? I think we definitely need more frequent good map balancing. Like, hmm. Ubisoft has been doing better work with that recently. Like. Forge was reworked to be better. It's not great still, but um, going around and fixing up these maps and making the existing maps uh, that are competitive more competitive would be great because right now we've got uh, five, six maps, I want to say. Roughly. Yeah, six maps in the competitive pool, yeah. It's uh, Beachhead, Harbor, Citadel, Temple, Overwatch, and High Fort. And is there one else I'm forgetting? The one Sank. with the two crossbows. Sank, okay. Sank, yeah. seven bridges. So yeah, seven maps. Sentinel. Um, Sentinel is not legal, I not think. In the, in, not in the, no, with the... I mean, I think if they changed... Sentinel wouldn't need much to be, be picked. If they made it a bit closer to like the elimination version, where there's ladders instead of those ballasters there. Mm. Um, but they, they won't remove the ballista um, for ma like casual matchmaking, because people just... Just don't... Yeah, it's a defining feature. Yeah, yeah and they, they won't. They just can't get rid of them in the same way they can't get rid of the. They couldn't fully get rid of the uh, the the trap doors in Overwatch, and they couldn't fully get rid of. I mean, they can't get rid of the the trap door. The what are they called? Think the the portcullises things in a uh, in Sank Bridge. No, they can't yeah, really get rid of those. Yeah, all the drops on uh, Harbor, like not Harbor. Yeah. Um, and that is the main problem with Harbor. It's like, there there are definitely issues with each of the even competitive maps we have, but uh, I think if Ubisoft were to be able to go through them again and just like try to trim out a few more, it would just make them even better. Um, of course, you know, people uh, in matchmaking often talk about, like I know in Freeza's server, they talk about baby proofing and how they don't like it or how... I, uh, you know, a bit of a meme. These maps have to have out match. Complain about baby baby proofing. Yeah. So I just want to comment the incredible store by Mina. Like, mm. like, I've been playing amazing. Oh, fortunately, doesn't last Rip. forever. But Competition but yeah. curse. Don't open your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it was doing really well. I mean, like, just look at the, the points Lee they've managed to gain by by him stalling this point. They were they were putting it even, and then he stalled for a good minute and a half, which is pretty exciting. Um, 
Yeah, you mentioned about the stalls. Like, yeah, admittedly, we, this isn't a full like commentary of the thing, but just watching this alone without having to talk about it, and when a stall is when it isn't just revenge holding and then a Mexican standoff, when it's legitimately one person having to fight for their life, it's really freaking cool. I certainly think it is. Um, but then, like, I I know how difficult it is to stall against these these kind of these situations. So it's it's very hard for for you know people for experienced players to comment on how exciting this is for you know a, a less experienced player or a neutral player to or a completely new player to, to, to know. Like just in the just with where Legion just died, the Legion's the JJ on the blue team. Um mm. he just died in the middle of activating like before he came in this respawn, he just died in the middle of activating his tier four feet. So he they, they killed him out of the start of, of Phalanx, which would have kept him alive for, you know, an extra 10 seconds because that big shield. Um, and that was quite a hype moment. But, like, if you don't know that that's coming, um, you know, it's not hype at all. So. Hmm. Yeah, there's kind of a golden... Whoa! Whoa! whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Mina's haunted. Mina's haunted. Here we go. Yeah, there's kind of a Goldilocks zone of... Like, oh, this is exciting and I have no idea what's going on. Which I think, I, at least for me, when I've talked to people who have watched these streams and talked about, do you remember any moment from it? It's like the one versus two, one versus three on a side point where it's not in the minions. It's nice and clean to see what's going on, but it, they anti-gank. It's, like, yeah. it's a similar situation to what you often see in videos. It is, you know, someone overcoming the odds. When it gets into the more like technical side of things or the bigger fight out, like for example, the classic scenario of either the first big team fight at the start of you know Sanctuary Bridge or the last team fight at Citadel Gate on one of the side points, those just kind of end up being a fuster cluck that you just look at either one fight, a one discrete fight, and not look at anything else, or you try and look at everything else. Suicidal suicide? No, nope, not tactical suicide. Or you just shut down because there's too much stuff going on in the similar way to where one shuts down if there's too much stuff going on on screen in a MOBA. So the anti-gank on a side point seems to be the golden zone of hey, I know what's going on and this is really cool. Probably also why those moments get the most clip generation outside of funny moments. Yep. Yeah. Ooh. And I think the game other than obviously ganking being one of these weird sort of scenarios where it is very favored for the gankers to the extent that like dedicated ganking characters have been in the meta for a long time um and and you get situations like what our friend nerva is just in now which well, although they, they managed to Yo, screw it up and so no. so this is this is what like you know i'd, I'd call an anti-gank right because he mm. they they messed up the the uh, uh semix and legion messed up their goki infinite and then uh, they managed to survive and the and the Berserker survived and actually got a kill. I guess most people wouldn't necessarily see that as like a super hype moment because it's not very well signposted. Um, Is that for Ron? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, we jest about that, but, you know, that kind of excitable stuff is what people pay attention to. In the same way as, like, if someone in CSGO does a really cool smoke play, it's like, is that simple? Is that simple? I think that's simple, guys. Like, we joke about that, but, you know, that name, that quick association can be valuable. Yeah. Uh, if only comp players were more big in on um, YouTube, Twitch, whatever, because, you know, yeah. it's, like, it's... The most popular um, content for Honor players on YouTube and Twitch are um, <laughs> anything but. Yeah, it's like this is where I would really wish the likes of Brogue were here because I know Brogue would have like a 600 page essay on that exact topic ready to go immediately because he was pushing for the longest time for more comp players to get into content creation, which, and it worked to an extent. I know Alern, Score, and especially Barak did do content creation for a while, and I think Barak is still doing it to an extent. Yeah, Barak's making, making some waves. Yes. Yeah, but we don't get that sort of, you know, out of tournament, out of stream, you know, videos that make waves on the algorithm, so to speak. I know that's a problem when I was, like, heavy into the smite scene. That was a big problem for uh, orcs was 
that outside of you know their personal Twitch streams, which is literally just press the button on your PC and go, where's the content? Where's the stuff to draw an engagement? Hey guys. Uh, oh, hey, hey, Nogos, how's it going? Hello, Nogos. I have something to add to that, and it's the question has been brought up before about whether it's it's on the players or not, and mm -hmm. yes, it, it is partly on the players to put themselves out there. However, somebody who produces and casts tournaments, uh, a little bit of that's on them in a sense to, because if you think about it, you know, and we've been talking about what's interesting to players and and whatnot, and. And to make this a to make this a, a spectator sport that everybody's going to be really interested in, you need a story, you need something to win, and you definitely need something to lose. And that's mm -hmm. something that the casters, if they are keeping up with what's going on with the teams, what's going on with the players, they can fill in those blanks and they can they can talk about you know like give player profiles as an example. And that's something that's that's something that that I'd like to see done more, and it's something that I would like to do more of. Is you know gets you know get a lot of details on specific players and during the cast and whatnot you have like a little highlight reel of 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 that player and talk about what they you know what they do well what they you know in in how they are as a player and how they are as a person and stuff like that kind of like a get to know you kind of thing and yeah you know, get the you know get people involved get people interested in the individuals not just the whole teams yeah they did I try and do that to an extent I just want to mention they did do that to an extent on the last Dominion series grand finals broadcast. Yeah. They did yeah, experiment the, the with intimate that. Mojin, uh the intimate moment with Legion was mm. probably one of the most memorable parts of that. <laughs> that was that was so, amazing. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think it, it definitely has success. Yeah. I I feel like for those like they they, they did that a lot more on the first Dominion series 2020 than this than this time around, which I think is a bit of a shame, but it's also partly due to the mm. format uh, having everything on one day so the na and the e means they're actually really pressed for time um and they can't have like this they don't have space for this extra uh extra i mean stuff that's important for building the story but obviously it's it you know if you you can't have that you have to have the matches if, if you're playing all of the matches on the same day you can't have the, the story and not the matches so I think they're a little bit hamstrung by the format, but it, but it would be nice to see if they could reach out a little bit more and do more community type stuff. I know Fre Freeze did a few has done an interview with uh, did interview with with uh, Nature from Natural Mind Games qualified um, the first the first week, and obviously Clutch is his personality is out there a lot because he streams as himself. But oh, uh, mm -hmm. and Barak has a YouTube videos again also on Nemesis. But there's lots of really interesting people in the scene, um, and. It would be nice if Ubisoft could try and promote their them a bit more. Um, Can't wait for Ubisoft to uh, promote Legion. Yeah. Interview him. It's gonna be well, fun. Well, what could? Well, what do you guys think about this? Is like you know, leading up to, kind of like with the the player profile thing. I was have, I was thinking about is like taking taking bits of of. You know, taking like interviews or whatnot, or little profile highlights of of a, of a of a player or a team, and and putting those out periodically, not just like on game day, but periodically say, okay, this is this, this is this. Kind of like you know, we see different clips of of highlights of of a, of a content creator. You know, yeah. hmm. I, I I you know I I do you know like people do stuff like that periodically or whatever. That's the one way, and and I can tell you from personal experience, it does drive traffic consistency does drive traffic like that so yeah i th I, I think something like that would be interesting to uh, to see you know even if it's not just player you know just you know you could take clips from the th from 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 stuff too but i mean i know they're only doing the official productions but yeah you know, they, we only see those like around game day or like shortly after we're not really seeing a lot of stuff leading up to it so i agree that and i've said it for the longest time there's not a huge bit of marketing around the Dominion series, there's still plenty of players that are like, oh, what's going on? What is this? It's tournament day. Oh, how do I how do I enter this tournament? I'm like, the tournament's already going, dude. But, yeah. Hmm. You know, it, there's just oh. not enough. There's not, and some, you know, you put it on the on the main on the main menu. That's great. And occasionally you might see something pop up at the end of the when you close out the game. That's fantastic. But and we might see the occasional tweet like again getting close to the game day but outside of that I i'm not seeing much outside of other content creators covering it i mean i would I love I to see what the solution is exactly but I, yeah. I, I think something regular would would, would help 
Yeah, just like I well, I really liked what you were doing and posting those highlights from the mm. from things on the on the comp sub. I think that was really really cool. And I wish they the, like the official account would do something a bit more like that. You know, like mm -hmm. even just it's sharing those clips, without... like the competitive yeah. for honor, like subreddit. It is like the ideal audience for that. But those clips are perfect to be shared on like Twitter. You know, nice discreet things. Your commentary over it, really good by the way. And to be able to just have those be sent out, like, hey, check this out. This is cool. Like the triple yeah. ledge clip you put out recently, uh, put out a little while. Was it the triple ledge or just like the mass ledge in general you put out one of the NA matches? That was hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was. Yeah, there's some really funny moments. That. Match. that was the last match in NA. The entire, the whole shebang. That was literally the last one, too. It was a hell of a yeah. match to go out on. I mean, there'd be some really, really close and really exciting matches to watch, which I think even are just exciting, even from like. You know, even without knowing what's going on, it's funny to see people get thrown off of ledges. Um, yeah. And when like the score is saying break double breaking on both scenes, and it, and it comes down to yes. like a one v one, or uh, like uh, like to win the to win the to win the tournament or win the match, like that's pretty that's hype as fuck. Um, and yeah, they do happen, even though those moments are fairly rare. And it would be great if those moments would have a bit more exposure. Like I on. Think on the note of fun content for a moment, I want to catch this before it, the, the moment leaves. Uh, Blitz talked in Twitch chat for a second that he might that they might start recording funny moments from their team of the Dom series, the voice comps of like deer screaming at you oh, for lagging out. Yeah, so because of that, I that's actually a type of content I've seen some Valorant and Overwatch orgs do, like uh, the what X sounds like. Uh, Sentinels put out uh, comps. Oh god, this bug is messing with my observation. Uh, like, they put out what our comms sound like when we won uh, Masters Rysovic <laughs> in Valorant. And it was literally their top, like, one of their top fraggers and shit talkers just going nuts on the enemy team. Like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? You suck! Yeah. And it was hilarious. Like, I, I don't imagine Ubisoft would officially license, like, the, like, the score brand, I'm gonna break my legs <laughs> off over your ass <laughs> or anything. Yeah. But, I like, mean... these... Team com like highlights, just highlighting what goes in. As long as it's not like TOS breaking, that's a good first step to yeah, like give I players think... a bit more personality. What does it sound like to be in a competitive match? I mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, it would. It, it sounds like every the uh, script with set mixes like and like. What are you doing? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like these are that they're, they're legit funny moments um and it would be great if they could have more space for those things. i th i mean i think it's partly it's a budget thing right and they 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 can only do mm -hmm. i think they they put in, they put obviously the the, the big broadcasts are quite expensive and and they i think they're pushing the limit of what they they have the budget for already um but i don't know if if maybe sometime maybe it would be and obviously you want to have a big slick event but if they could I feel like some of these other stuff, like, could be done a lot cheaper. You know, uh, if it, if you had like the, the 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 official Twitter had like submit your clips from the, your playing in the Dominion series and then tweeted them out, like, yeah. for, for like the first few weeks, and then people could just put their highlights and and obviously they can you know vet I them like for that. being you know not saying gamer words in the in, in, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, I like that. I like that a lot. Let me let me pick back off that real quick. So yes, uh, the the that is a really smart. I really like that idea because it's like you're saying it's like working smarter, not harder. I like what they did with the game plan, reaching out with folks like yourself and Freeze and and whatnot to get hero overviews that are up to date. That mm. and oh and and discussions about strategy and and mind games in the Dominion series and in competitive play. I completely agree with you, and I think that's brilliant. I mean, to a certain extent, they are like I mean, they're doing that right now. I mean, uh, the the dojo is you know it's supported by Ubisoft, so they are so they are helping uh, somewhat. But but yeah, it's like I guess we it's, I guess you can always say there's always more they could do. Um, but it sorry, I'm it's, just having, and uh, they do no, they do a great job. They do a great job. It's just so, there's there's only so much that can be done. Yeah. The issue still remains, though, I think is what we're all saying, is that the issue still remains. There's still a huge audience that we're not getting to, which is, I think, is what's kind of bring, part of what's bringing up the conversation today is, like, how do we get to that audience? Yeah. Yeah, like, and I, while we sit here and sort of spitball freely ourselves, I imagine the, a lot of these are questions that, you know, Clarice mistressed 
at Ubisoft has agonized over herself. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. She's, unless there's more people behind the scenes that I am not aware of, Mistress has been one of the driving forces. And I imagine this no kind doubt. of thing is something she has been agonizing over. These kind of questions. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, and they're also, they, they, there's like, I think you know, it being a big company, everything they they want to try, they have to probably put it past you know, certain through legal, and through financing, and, bureaucracy. Yeah, yeah, and everything has to like go through all this stuff. That it means that we can we can say, oh, well, why don't you just make it so that like you know you can submit clips on Twitter? Just and... throw more money at it for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even if that wouldn't necessarily be particularly expensive, they have to have meetings to discuss it, and and like you know, these all have their you know it's not i guess it's not easy to do any of the things that we any any suggestion for anything is not is not is always more complicated than than it than, it than it is to say yeah it's yeah. words are cheap um god this spectator bug is messing with me it's what the <laughs> spectating on stream has been ass right now because we'll, one two three four five six seven eight are swapped yeah my instincts keep giving to other people can i ask oh? what uh I haven't seen the brackets since I got up. Where are we at? So we are in the. Finals. This is the grand finals. Um, and I. Th you. This is. I think it's one one moment. Um. I believe. Let me I'll double check. check the, the brackets. I can check the match chat actually because okay. I can know the. Yeah. Zerg uh, in grand finals. One, one, yes, yeah. I know. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't one. it? Um, it's great to see. Um, that. Apparently, the Zerk. Uh, to catch you up, Norgos, according to Antonio. Uh, was to do with his synergy with the demon ball gank. Apparently, he can do stuff off it that's a little more efficient, which is why he's picked, I believe. I mean, I don't think it can't just be the only reason. Like, uh, he has, uh, no, he doesn't have crashing charge, so there's a big difference there. I think mm, Zerk is probably considered against uh, Zen who went JJ. Yeah. Ah, um, thank you. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, I mean, Ward has a horrible time against Goki and uh, against other, like, some of, the, some of the other meta characters that you can only punish with dodge attacks that he doesn't have. Um, like, well, damn, it's going to get to another double-breaking double breaking oh scenario now. Like, oh, I mean, this, yeah. this, this could be the way this match actually, Yeah, Cinder's so. Wolf, I'll actually address that in a little bit because that's a good point in Twitch chat. But just to wrap this point off for a moment... When, like, on, like, broadcast, when's the last time we've been able to have, like, discussions like what we just had there? Like, you don't get those kind of rare picks frequently enough because of the, the balance in the game doesn't really, isn't conducive to that. To where, oh, why is this character picked in this specific situation? That isn't something that happens too frequently. Compare that to, mm -hmm. you know, other games where you can often have situations where you're just like, oh, there's, like, a specific comp for one exact scenario for completely unique characters. And for all of that, Competitive? This doesn't really happen, or at least not much. I yeah. Think that, uh, something I was gonna say earlier, and I don't remember what brought it up, but <clears throat> I think part of you know part of like generating interest and also being able to. Oh, we were talking about the specific things. Okay, well, you know the one B twos, the one B Xs, those are really really interesting. Those pop, but the other scenarios, and I think the issue with like team fighting and any other any of those other scenarios that may not seem as, I guess, big or as interesting to players is because, like you said, there's a lot of stuff going on and not a lot. Of, I, I think that there is a, a big gap with knowledge. There's a disconnect between uh, what's going, what's actually happening, why there's the, the, you know, the actual methodical things that are going on in the middle of those team fights and what they actually see and, and interpret. And I think part of that does go into under the casters where you know kind of explaining those situations you know you've got you've got two you've got share one you got share two analytics you know analytics is there to like kind of explain what's going on but you also have to keep things like entertaining and the entertainers they're like okay well you know oh that's crazy he's broken in half blah, 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 blah. but also being able to break all that stuff down there's only so much you can do in those moments and i think that there is a, there are some opportunities for casters to explain some of those things when when that's happening even if it's being you're like oh you say it once well if that's the only time you say it all day there are people that are tuning in constantly it's like a radio show you might repeat the same thing every you know once every half hour but those people that keep tuning in and tuning out they're getting that data they're getting that information even if you yeah. know you throw it in there randomly and, and when you when you get those opportunities yeah, yeah that's I mean, actually 
to go on the wrestling reference real quick, that's a reason why if you watch a WWE broadcast on a uh, network, on like Raw, mm-hmm. at the top of the hour, every hour, they will surmise what's coming up in the main event every time. If you watch a WWE broadcast every single hour, if it come back from a break, they'll talk about the main talking points for a show because mm-hmm. you've got people tuning in and out. Like that's true on cable television, that's true on Twitch. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the like part of the makes it difficult for Froner is that the, like you said in team fights there is so much going on it's not it wouldn't be possible for a single person to like I mean even if you're like if you're doing the sort of play to plays in in playing football right you said oh and I, I I don't know many sports so like you've got okay. you've got like oh and uh, Beckham passes it to to thingy to thingy to thingy and and you know on it's like there's, there's just one ball right you can yeah. you can mm. talk about who's kicking the ball currently because there's only one of it whereas like in a in a in a four v four team fight you can point out some things but it's literally impossible to cover everything and I think it's almost impossible to to give even the even like a, an an overview sometimes like. I think Clutch does a really good job of it when he's commenting because he has such good understanding and he can pick up if you can pick up immediately on what is on an important important moment like just instantly and then talk and then and then call it out with the correct name for it instantly um, because he's so experienced he's so knowledgeable in the game himself but it's hard for anybody with I mean you have to be a really good player to be able to pick those out. Um, and also be a really good caster to be able to be fast enough with it. Yeah, I mean, I, and they've been doing a good job. Like I think the 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 casters they've got on the main mini series have been doing a, a good job given yeah. their level of experience. But their experience is definitely limited compared to the the top players. Um, yeah, it's like. I know I have joked about like, oh, the Dota casters are invading, Urgh. but you know those guys <laughs> are being brought in because. Yeah, you know, they have experience at top flight, so they're able to even with you know the experience they've been have able to try and get together decently quickly. It is not as in depth as maybe native talent. They have the chops to be able just to blag it and make it a fun show. Oh, anyway. oh yeah, and no, they definitely. Note, yes, Brigata Del. Sorry, yeah. yes, Brigata Del Peter. We can see the yeah, chat. We are in the chat. We yeah. can see you. Yeah, they 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 like uh, they've been doing a great job. Like I, that was by uh, by no means uh, any mm. kind of criticism of of them. Um, they like to slag them off or anything. I think they've been doing a fantastic job of, yeah. of making it super hype. Like even the most knowledgeable, and they 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 do they make it more hype than Clutch when he and he's like among the most knowledgeable and also hype. You know, cast. He's quite good at casting when he does cast. Like hmm. they do a better job on that just because they got more experience um, hmm. with that kind of aspect of of casting and and that's and that is not to be at all underestimated in terms of making in terms of making it watchable it's not about necessarily getting people to know what's going on but also to make it exciting right and the whole point is to make that make it exciting to 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 watch and if you can be excited without knowing what's going on then you're doing a great job i mean like oh you know the, the stereotype of the korean casters right and some people just like love yeah. watching korean casters even if you don't speak korean and you don't know what the game is their level of enthusiasm yeah. and excitement is hype on its own and yes. like that's something that although as a flip side to that some people do find it off putting it's like imagine korean level like hype commentary for an f1 broadcast or like formula 1 or tennis or something <laughs> i've i have <laughs> had several when i've asked like pro players or people in the community like hey give me some critique on my commentary what do you like what do you not like some people often say like hey you guy you're a little too excitable in moments where there is an earned excitement it is possible Oof. to be Overly enthusiastic, and some people so do fall gonna get the gonna get the res. Oh, oh I doesn't manage to get. He doesn't manage to get the res. I'm sorry. <laughs> so that was just a like in terms of hype moments. There was quite a hype on there. Uh, uh, managed to just about not die. Um, hmm. So yeah, sorry. Oh good. I'm, I'm watching it and talking at the same time. Uh, it's yeah. hard to focus on. Th- this is, by the way, for anyone who's watching, this is the fourth. Um, Ma- uh, yeah, the fourth, it's two one right fourth now. match. Yes, two one. So if uh, the blue team, Semix's team, Hell Collectors win this match, it is the tournament for them, and they go through to the majors. Um, and if they don't, then they got another chance. And then if they lose that one, uh, if they lose the next two matches, then uh, Nem Gloria have a 
bracket reset chance, so they ha can yeah. have to win another best of five. Yeah, I got this. Uh, I, I got help. All right, uh, no, right, thanks so much for thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for for the invite. Thanks for having me, guys. Take care. Yeah, you too. Bye. But yeah, the something you too, that's... thanks for the invite. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the... Enjoy your meal. Oh, you too. <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh, you too. <laughs> oh, oh, that's always the worst. But uh, Cinder's Wolf. That's why I couldn't some... be a castle yeah. because I'm terrible at this. <laughs> Forgetting my words and everything. Yeah, Cinder's Wolf uh, brought up something in Twitch chat that on a slightly different topic, which could help in terms of bringing people into the onboarding process for at least getting into competitive for honor a bit more and that's ranked dominion where did that go it was here one day and then it's gone like yeah. and i think a ranked dominion like playlist could be helpful or at least appreciated in that regard yeah what people would think? care i think people would care more if it was ranked dominion i mean like they would have to wouldn't they um yeah because, like, think about the jump you want to make if you want to get more serious. Like, if you sit there with your mates and think, okay, we want to, you know, take Dominion a bit more seriously. Like, what is the the easiest way to get there without doing anything external? It's like, sweat a bit harder in Dominion on whatever platform you're on until your MMR caps out. Like, yeah. if you want to And even get then, you... Yeah. Hmm? Sorry. Sorry, yeah, carry on. Yeah, like... There's nothing in game. The, if you want to step up, there isn't a ranked queue. You, there is no way to become, you know, a ranked grinder. It's everything's external. Yeah. So and sorry, sorry continue, Spaniel. No, no, no. Uh, uh, you, you, you say something. I talk an awful lot. So. <laughs> All right. Um, one of my friends, Hero, talks very consistently about ranked dominion. It's one of the most consistent um, suggestions he has because he. You know, he's like 27 years old, he works at a normal schedule, and so he gets home and, you know, he's only got a couple of hours each night to uh, play For Honor, and that often doesn't work with other competitive players' schedules, because a lot of players on Xbox either play on DGEN schedules or European schedules or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he'll get on for a few hours every night and he'll play solo Q4's matchmaking, and... You know, I'm not sure what kind of mental he has to be able to withstand that, but one of his most consistent complaints, yeah, it's one of his most consistent complaints is that, you know, there's nowhere to go with it. It's either he finds a four stack of competitive players and he gets stomped a thousand to a hundred because his teammates are matchmaking players, or, um, you know, he finds other random matchmaking players and they stomp them a thousand to zero. So it's just not a great experience for anyone. Um, especially because he's trying to get better and when pe when people are on for scrims there's really nothing to, that he can do yeah yeah um absolutely agree the ranked dominion would like and it's also as similar to what i was saying with how if you had xp from customs and so you actually mm. people, more people would play scrims if you weren't waste never you know missing out on a double xp weekend if you do that um like uh, like to certain extent, I feel like, oh, I'm casting this, and, like I'm missing out on playing uh, <laughs> and grinding up my Kyoshin, um, get the cool fashion. Like, I, I ranked would definitely help in that in that mode, but I think also just like being able to practice because a lot of a lot of being a good like good at com competing isn't just it's not just playing at the high level. It's, it's <clears throat> practicing so that you can play at those, at those levels. Oh, holy shit! That makes just popping off there. Out of uh, one, but make no. make ranked dominion drop like a unique armor set signed by nemesis or something i don't know <laughs> oh actually or just increase drops for playing ranked period like yeah have rewards for doing it not just like the special effects but make it so there's a make it you know to take an example from another game warframe uh it's got something called the steel path in it basically hard mode you get for completing the the base map it's got increased drops in it because it's hard mode make it so ranked q gives you increased drops or increased scavenger crates or something make it so there's a reason to want to even casually drift into rank to try it out and that might be a, an okay feeder system into the competitive world yeah, and I if don't... we wanted to mess with single pick or the even the system we were talking about with the pick and ban, then that would be the perfect place to implement it. Because yes. it allows players a more natural experience to where if they wanted to go from, you know, matchmaking dominion to ranked dominion, it's more easy for them to go from ranked dominion there into competitive scribs and tournaments. 
Yeah. Kempo Wait, points out that the ranked ranked one v ones do give higher rewards, and actually, I only play ranked duels. If I'm playing duels, I only play ranked. Um, yeah. Because have yeah, I, mean, I been I talking on my backside? How much are the rewards increased? I mean, it's not a huge amount. Um, it's like. Ha am I in misinformed here? Oh, we're talking about ranked. You get the unique here. ornaments sometimes. So you get unique ornaments and you get the, there's the ornaments and paint patterns and stuff. And you also get. Um... Oh, nice tier 4 coming out there, so that's going to kill Legion. Oh, no. They have the points, so they're going to clean, cleanse their bleed. Legion did, Legion did die. Hmm. Uh, so this this is, looks like it could end up being a, a tournament point for these guys with one dead in, in break, executed in breaking. Here and got executed into breaking, so. Oh, that's foul! Oh, longbow no. into demon ball. <laughs> longbow into demon ball. That is. Yikes! Oh, he's got he got longbowed in return though. Um, but yeah, in, in that case, I stand corrected, and I thought ranked only gave you the the, the special drops, not an increase in ex normal rewards too. It does give slight increase in XP and steel, but it's not a huge amount. It's like maybe fifteen percent more, twenty percent at most. Um, yeah, oh, it's like, great save there. I could see, like, in Dominion, ranked Dominion, if you win, or maybe even if you win and go up a tier and stay in a, t in a tier when you get promoted, there's a big reward based on what tier you qualified into the next season on. Or yeah. even just winning a match in general, you get 1.5 times or what, what you know, something significant. Of course, that starts getting into the whole, you know, the purse strings of the economy and that caused potential issues but at the same time gives give casual players an incentive to go oh that rank q there's a reason for me to play that let's give it a go yeah i mean i think they also need to they, well they need to work out with how they would implement a ranked q which it's in itself is a non-trivial i like would say oh just add ranked right well mm. okay when you have uh when you have Ranks like it, it's going to split the 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 Q, the player base for uh, regular Dominion, so that's that's already a problem in itself. If if you especially if the higher NMRs it can be very long queue times. Side note: I think that's GG for the tournament. Yes, that is GG. The L collectors take it. Um, Lucky uh, GGs, these guys. I will put on so we have something to watch. I can stream my recordings. My of... Show my Show my clip, please. Show your clip, all right. Oh, oh the, the the hiring clip. Oh, no, not just that. The other clip that <laughs> that I at the end of the stream, I can show your clips. <laughs> all right. Okay. Oh, hey, Miguel, uh... how you doing? Oh, Miguel, they're in the Twitch chat. Hello. All right, I will. Start. Sorry for a moment. Can I join in your vo vocal chat? Yeah, you can. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It, yeah, it's an open chat. You just got to be in the for for the front of trials and dojo Discord, and you can hop on in. Yep. By all means, uh, I'm, and, we're, and we're interested to. We've been talking a long time, and uh, Verbs a caster, and I am, you know, like involved in the community and stuff. But we, I, it is. I think it's valuable to hear the perspectives of uh, people who, um, you know, just just watch and en enjoy the game. Um, so, like, I, I would like to hear more people. I'm, I, tell me if this is working. I'm, it's going to be on mute because it's got some of my uh, chatting in the background, so it will be a. It won't really work as. Um, I was talking over it, so you have to just uh, be okay with it being muted. Um, yeah. But if you uh, is, let me know if that's if that's showing up on stream. Fair question from Megyla: Is this going to end up turning into the NA watch party as well? I'm not going to be able to stick around. I think so. No, we're gonna we've got half an how, half an hour left on it because I um well cuts the length of the dojo and yeah I'll, I'll be too tired. <laughs> I've got to, got to eat my dinner. Yeah. Um, yeah, this this wasn't meant to be a watch party per se, Megyla. It's just the timings of the dojo session and the end of EU lined up. Yeah, uh, Stag, can, can you tell me if you can see the? Um... We can see it on stream. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's showing up on Twitch. Okay, there it's showing up on Twitch as well. Else. All right, nice. Um, yeah, just got something in the background. When it stops, I'll just click next. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, Stop. as. I, th I, the only t reason I keep bringing up these points about you know bringing new players in is because, in my mind, please someone stop me if it's if I'm talking out my backside here, but it feels like ferrana has got a bit of a problem where, if you're into the scene, it's very top heavy weighted. Like if you want to be into the scene, you've got to be in all the different silo discords. You've got to be in for glory. You've got 
but keep an eye on things, all the drama, all the weird, per quirky personalities. There isn't like a liquipedia you could easily go Google or whatever. Like there's in-depth law that, you know, people only have occasional links for, you know, I made a casual reference to I break your legs off over your ass. You know, it's a famous clip in like the for glory sort of the competitive scene, but you know, I doubt anyone bloody knows that outside of here. So I if we can get more of a bottom up interest going in competitive play, you know, people to want to casually dip their toes in with a ranked dominion, it could start a trickle up effect to where it sort of solidifies for on a competitive, because right now, I think it's a safe shout to say that a lot of the viewership for Dominion series comes from drops. Yes. It sucks to say, but I feel like that's the case. Yeah, um, I, I agree. Uh, I, and like, if you want to build a competitive scene, you uh, like a competitive viewership, it is beneficial to have people, you know, care about what they're, what they're seeing. Um, but I, I just wanted to mention about talking about ranked mm. Dominion, because we, 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 we've like said multiple times, oh, ranked Dominion is something we should like, we should want. But implementing ranked dominion in itself is isn't even if they could just like turn on a ranked dominion playlist is is non-trivial because you have to think about how to make it an enjoyable experience um when i was when ranked dominion was in the game a lot of people said well we just don't play because if you if you queue solo you end up running into you know a full stack of of russian comp players and you just get bodied um and if you play in a four stack the the matchmaking takes forever and ever so these aren't like these are non-trivial issues you need to get get across. I think they need to make it so that you know if you're ranked and you're and if you're queuing ranked solo queue, you need to only go against other solo teams. Um, they need to have some better ways of communicating in game between team members. Or like maybe they need to make it so voice chat is mandatory or something. <laughs> hello, um, guys. Hello. Ah, hello there. Hello. Um, um Briata della Pizza. Oh. Ah, you're the one in chat. Hello there. <laughs> yeah. Please Hello there. Um and you were saying, Spain? Yeah, so it, and then uh you need to make it so people who are in solo queue like don't get matched against people who are uh four stacks and have no which they have no chance of, of even try even being able to do well in against. Um it's it's a tricky it's a tricky problem to solve. How would you make a ranked four v four mode? I don't really know what ranked modes are like in other in other games. What what's ranked mode like in um in Rainbow, for example, in Rainbow Six Siege, or in other games that that you know about? Uh, I could take this, but if someone else wants to comment on like their stuff, if they know. So Overwatch has a system where they provide incentive with like thing golden guns, um, and you most of the incentive for playing is toward getting those and it is um basically following the same rules as overwatch's quick play um as in you know it's single pick everyone has to choose their role before they go in um so i i think that if it were implemented similarly to that in for honor where we've got you know the proper incentives it, it would work well um but what else um so, the, by that so, like in oh, when you're playing Overwatch ranked, do you have uh, do solo people who are queuing solo get put against four stacks that are communicating, or is the voice chat always on? Like, how do they work work around the um, people? You know, can you queue is queue in in duos, or is it just is it only like randoms that you you queue with? So I believe that the higher levels you're maxed out at queuing as a stack of two players. Um, voice chat is optional, um, though it, it's incentivized, or, or not incentivized, but recommended, certainly, because that, without communication in Overwatch, you're not going to have a fun time. Similar to For Honor, of course. I uh, can Faith, ask what you say? a question, uh, if you can. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I know... Mm, some of you guys play on Xbox, right? Um, um, I do. Jones does, yeah. Yeah, but, I occasionally uh, play. Yeah, yeah, uh, but uh, I don't know. You guys are clan or mm, stuff like this? Ooh, no, no, oh, uh, no. Well, I'm not. At least. No, this this yeah. isn't a clan like meeting or anything. This is a uh, a Discord community uh, initiative, somewhat in partnership with Ubisoft itself. Uh. 
to improvement just in generally for all. This isn't some sort of like special clan you've stumbled upon. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice, I guess. <laughs> so, it, I don't know. Because I have racist in my uh, name. I swear I'm not a racist. It's just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Oh, right. <laughs> but yes, the, 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 the For Honor Dojo is just a place to get better. This is the standard Thursday session that we do. Uh, oh, it's like with the idea, by the way. <laughs> yeah, can so, I, um, I don't know. I... Yes, we Oh, hey, Weaver, how's it going? Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Faith. Go ahead. No, no, no. No, 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 the other guy was talking. Go ahead. Faith, my bad. Oh, What's up? oh Faith, yeah. I said, I don't know. Some of you guys need a coach on Xbox or a trainer. Just for fun, because uh, I like to help the people to improve their self. Ah, okay, uh, well, after this session, if you want, uh, contact Spaniard. Spaniard might be able yep. to help you out getting set up with, like, being a coach position here. Yeah, well, if you look in the... Uh, we have some channels here for, like, training and sparring, and also the scrims channels. You put the right roles. You can... Um, basically, anybody who, like, is looking for a game or looking to improve with certain characters, they'll say. And then you can, um, like, just... See them, see them saying that, and then like organize some matches between you and that kind of stuff. Oh, okay, mm. yes, because uh, I see the rules on Twitch. I press on Xbox and I uh, reading the rule, and I guess it's okay because I am I play duels and brawls, uh, also the minion, but I prefer the duels because uh, for me the true skills. Uh, um, they are seen on duels and on uh, in one v one and on uh, in Dominio. I don't know. That's all. Uh, that's well and good faith. Sorry to cut you off here, but we only got about twenty minutes left in this session. I do want to get us back on topic. So yeah. that kind of thing, leave that until after this session ends in twenty Perfect. minutes. That's okay. I'm waiting. Okay. I'm waiting. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we have been, we what do you want to say? Um, I just wanted to give some food for thought because, sure. uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm going to sound like a dick, like being on your parade, but it's actually a discussion I've had with, uh, some of my friends who play as well, like Wu Gang, we just like recently expanded, yeah. but, um, sure, shoot. basically there is no one problem with Froner and having like a uh, spectator appeal and a healthy competitive scene. The entire game in the way it operates works against that and let me explain why sure i mean first off it start i mean you you've just talked about lack of rain mo ranked mode so i'm not going to go over that again. that's very basic stuff um however the more complicated stuff that people don't realize is that learning for honor is not normal and what i mean by this is that uh recently i played i started play playing street fighter and getting to like real fighting games and I was shocked by how easy in Street Fighter it was for me to understand what my mistakes were, what areas I can improve in, and how easy it was for me to just watch a replay and be like, oh my god, that's just, I should have done this. This is what I need to practice. However, in For Honor, you have a bit of that at the start, right? Like, especially if you start off with duels, which I recommend, honestly. Like, if you're barely new to the game, you're, you're starting off with duels, you're like, okay, I need to work on, uh, like, blocking lights, right, for example. I just need to work on, on surviving longer. But once you get to 4v4, and you get to a point where you don't know what you're doing wrong because you just keep losing, for example, or you keep feeding revenge. Because, I mean, first off, MM is, you know, obviously not going to tell you a lot. But... When you get to a point where you need to basically be told by someone else what the fuck a revenge tag is and why it expires after five mm. seconds, you, like, it, this is where, like, it enters, like, the bone zone. Where you just don't, For Honor stops being a conventional learning experience. Where you have to look at outside resources and, like, other players' feedbacks and discoveries to actually keep progressing because otherwise like you're not going to understand like let's say i'm watching in spectator mode right i'm watching this tournament and i see uh like set mix and legion ganking someone with warlord and jj and they're going for like a headbutt into heavy gank the guy is at one hp but he almost has full revenge so I, i'm like a new player right i'm like oh he he might get revenge from this but then everyone just stops pressing buttons for five seconds no, like, and you're like, what is what is going on? Why are they not just killing him? Then after five seconds, 
They press buttons and they kill him and he doesn't get revenge. This is the kind of stuff that does not make sense. You're like, what? Why did they just do that? Like, mm-hmm. this is the kind of stuff that you have to learn externally. You cannot learn learn it, um, I believe it's diegetically the word I'm looking for. I'm not very yeah, sure. Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah. It's, it's not it's not organic. Like, you're not just learning it from, like, your experience because you're like, what what the hell is going on? Oh, and so they have improved that a little bit, at least, at least now that you have the revenge meter flashes. Well, and now you, you see it. It yeah, doesn't that's, explain it in-game, though. That, doesn't explain yeah, that's it. the thing. Oh, no, no, and yeah. even with the revenge meter flashing, sometimes it's very hard to see if someone's at crit health. Like, the amount of times where people feed revenge because they think it stopped flashing, but it didn't, is crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. And this is just, like, one aspect of this, right? Like, after that, like, the other aspect that doesn't even make any sense, even to competitive players, is Renown. Renown is completely broken. It has to be fixed. If Ubisoft really, like, as a company, and I mean, like, developers individually, of course, they care about the game. I've met them. I know what they're like. But if Ubisoft as a company really care about the health of the game, stuff like Renown would have been fixed at the same time as they introduced just the normal, like, universal Renown and Breach, for example. Like, that kind of stuff works against the game at such an important base level that it makes everything else significantly worse, not only to play, but to watch. Because, like, for example, the same game that we're spectating right now, like, very easily, I believe, uh, I believe it's this one, where uh, L Collectors, they had something like, their entire team were, were like 14 and 2, or like 8 and 1, and the other team was like 2 and 3, 3 and 4. And the game is so close. And you don't understand why. You're like, what is going on? And that's just because of how Renown works. And how, like, a lot of systems like that just clash with each other. And it, it prevents you from really, like, um, organically, like, predicting what's going to happen. And it makes it really unenjoyable to watch for, for a lot of people. Um, I, do, I do agree with those, like, I do completely agree with you and i have i've been on record of saying i think revenge and renown are like the two like biggest problems with the game yeah. we talked a little but, about revenge earlier in the context of ganking but, but it's it doesn't revenge is a very is a very artificial system and has led to a very artificial way that combat flows like you have these like i think i mentioned it briefly i personally think it makes it ter- turn based you have you you attack until you've got revenge uh, and that you don't do any, you can't press buttons whilst you're being whilst you're being ganked because otherwise you put yourself in recovery and die. Um, and you attack, and then you're attacked until you get revenge, and then you can attack whilst you're holding revenge. And then when you pop revenge, everybody rolls away from you, and then you stall. Um, and then you know re- rinse and repeat, and that's just how. Yeah. And it's a very and and you, you get people complain about people feeding revenge in in matchmaking, but like that's what you sh- if the game made sense. That's what you should do, right? You should attack the person who's just not who's standing there and not doing anything. Yeah. Right? That's that's the thing. Just to expand on what you're saying, because I don't want to get. I could like literally talk about revenge and like its effect on for honor for hours on it. I've done it before. But the thing is that the the main takeaway from revenge is that unfortunately, it's a system that is required to for the game to function because the game with revenge is like is silly. Like, you're just, like, pressing buttons. There's nothing you can do to defend yourself, really. Except, and I want to, like, really, like, emphasize this. For some characters that can kind of work. So, for example, Zanhu can kind of work without revenge. Because the character has a lot of, like, you can actually play with your spacing a lot. You have a lot of VX options. It's not perfect, obviously. But compare that to something, like, I don't don't know. uh, uh, Just a good example. Like, Warlord is a very basic character. Like he doesn't have a dodge attack. No, he he has a full box. He has no way. He has no way to fucking. I mean, we're not talking about Shinobi. <laughs> Shinobi's no. a whole other game. <laughs> but basically, basically, my point is that without revenge, the game just falls apart. Revenge oh, yeah. is like the tape holding everything together, but it's a tape that like really sucks to look at and that you don't want to think about too much because it might just break any minute. Because and the the point is that. When you're doing a cool 1vx, uh, we had like a joke, uh, me and my friends, where like if someone 1vx in the tournament, if someone anti ganks, for NA, people are going to flame the people who are ganking for being bad at the game because you just shouldn't have given revenge. But EU's yeah. like, 
Nah, bro, he's just a great anti gank. But that's the point is that the the point behind that is that you shouldn't I, I don't know how to word this properly, but essentially revenge is a mechanic in the game that you have to interact with as little as possible to really like get to the meat and potatoes and it's extremely frustrating because sometimes since it's the only real 1vx mechanic in the game apart from like a few things like lawbringer jj and uh griffin like special parry effects external blocking technically as well yeah i mean yeah sure that's that's the other big one um without that mechanic like if you don't get revenge and you just get melted because someone like managed your attacks properly, well, it just feels like you never got to actually 1vx. You never got to show off yeah. your skill. Okay, okay. So, sorry to cut in here, Weeboo. But no, go ahead, about, go ahead. I was 10 sorry, minutes, I was... We got about 10 minutes left and we're getting a bit too far into the weeds. But if I've been interpreting what you've been saying properly and some good points, so something that what you're essentially saying is it's not these high-end ideas of about engagement and retention and all this stuff that we've been talking about. That's the problem with For Honor being a proper esport or a spectator sport. It is more of a fundamental problem with the video game we're watching in the first place. Yes, that needs to be addressed. Absolutely. Because uh like that that's a great one. The the engagement and stuff like that with like casuals like that just comes naturally. If people like the game and enjoy watching it, then they'll just watch it. Like um look at the Street Fighter, for example, has about the same amount of players as For Honor. The Street Fighter Five specifically. Hmm. But it gets, like, thousands upon thousands of players for every tournament. Because people love watching that game. They love watching top players, like, expressing themselves through their characters and their actions. In For Honor, what's the difference between one warlord and another? You That's can't tell me. Yeah. There isn't. Yeah. They yeah. all play the exact same way. There's, like... And they're starting. They're finally starting to figure out like good characters. Like Zan Hu, for example, is a great one. Like the new Orochi, uh, like BP, is a fantastic one. Fantastic example, in my opinion. But um, basically, I, I'm not gonna like uh, extend your time too much here. But that that's a fantastic way to put it. It's just the base game is flawed. And you need to address that if they want real viewers. They need to start from the ground up. They're trying to skip steps all the time. It's not I working. Agree. Out. I agree to some extent. I mean, I, I, well, I agree to a significant extent, but the game still has players. So, like, it's not just that the people still play the game and still like playing the game. So it's not just that the game itself, you know, is, is broken in terms of being unpleasant. Oh, to play I agree. And watch, like, so so the, the, I, it definitely has aspects, and there are people that, things that everybody complains about in the games. Like, everybody complains about being ganged. Everybody, you know, also complains about spat. Just, spat to, just like to interject real quick, I will say For Honor is a fantastic game that is heavily flawed, but that yeah. it's still a fantastic game underneath. That's why a lot of people play it. Yeah. And I, mean, like, I think that the main thing is, like, obviously those things need to be improved, and I, like, I 100% agree that, agree that something we didn't actually cover really about Renown and snowballing is that the matches become less exciting to watch because it's so snowball-y, um, the way Renown works, and I think that needs to be changed as well. Um, and... Uh, needs to be less focused on giving the team a win more mechanic it needs to be balanced across classes it i personally would have it so that feats unlock at certain points in the game in addition to renown so if you haven't already got the feats by getting renown uh, uh, when it reaches like 400 points uh when the first team reaches 100 points everybody gets their tier ones and then when it reaches 800 points everybody gets their tier threes and that kind of stuff um yeah. to make it less snowbally and in, make Whilst, whilst keeping Renown still being there, because it does add depth, even if it's complicated depth. Um, Absolutely. But, like, I, I think though, whilst those things are super important to, for the game to fix eventually, um, I don't think they, the current problems with them are enough that you can't get people watching and enjoying watching it as well. Um, they're not... They, they, they're things that can be worked on at the same time, if that makes any sense. Um, at least in my opinion. But yeah. I know. Can I also uh, tell them if I'm going too far? Like, not too far, but too long. But um, uh, recently I saw a post on the subreddit that you commented on. Um, and it was about the... There was a double breaking situation in one of the tournaments. I think Wu Gang and someone else. I don't oh, yeah, know. Yeah, Wu Gang and TKS. 
And a lot of people in the comments um, were talking about how there was no skill in using feats. Oh, yeah, I know. Meanwhile, well, no, no, no. That's the thing. I kind of, they have a point, though. That's, they're yeah, not, obviously, hard. they're not entirely, like, obviously, they don't entirely understand everything. But the, that's also, like, posts like that are a perfect example to look for what to change. Because when someone, when, when people see that, because those people don't usually watch clips, right? Yeah. But having clips like that, because there's not many, but having clips like that is great for growth because it shows highlights. It shows you what you can do, the potential of the game. But when people see the potential, it's just like every team using your tier four at once in a fight on mid. It's extremely easy to just be like, oh, this is like the end game. Like, why bother practicing? Yes, yes. And I that's agree also... That's also a result of like tier four being like kind of like obscene and like more MOBA. It's like it's not necessarily a bad thing, but when the game portrays itself as a like medieval fighter, it's like it's like I don't know if you guys know about like Mordhau, just like chivalry, right? If Mordhau just had like something in the game where after a kill streak you just get like a catapult and kill or like bombs and kill everyone, like people would hate that. It works in For Honor because it's more of a MOBA formula. And that's part of why spectating it is so odd. And why... Like, because you have some people who ap appreciate the MOBA side. And some people who appreciate both. Some people who appreciate the fighting side. But it's really hard to, like, find a middle ground between two. Or, like, an acceptable middle ground between two. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Megayla actually makes a quick point. We've got about four, uh, five minutes left, but Megayla makes a point in chat that is conducive to that. Make feats unique loadouts per hero that you can't customize. Most of the shared feats that are picked are boring as fuck anyways. So almost like how Dota does their trees. You can, instead of in, having no choice, but the Dota 2 heroes have a feat tree that they can pick up as they level, and it's always the same choices each time. Like leveling ability, like leveling abilities in any of MOBA, but Dota specifically has that function. So having a way to where there is the set feats per hero, or maybe you have a choice of two per slot, but they're all unique, or at least, or maybe even if that's too much, reduce the amount of feats and then make each feat more interesting instead of having three per slot. Yeah, I mean, they've been moving towards that in, in, since Marching Fire, really. Every hero that's come out has had just fully unique feats. And in fact, uh, well, at least one has got a full loadout of unique feats. I, I, don't, I don't know about the year one DLC characters. Did they, like, I know some of them had unique... Uh, year, I'm thinking, like, uh, I think, yeah, it, it started with Centurion Shinobi because Shinobi got the various, uh, he got... Yeah, we'll uh, the, Nugi Kubi, the shuriken. Shotgun. Yep. Yeah, and yeah. in fact, Scent, Scent has uh, oh, Centurion's March, Nugi Yo, 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 was unique at the time. And yeah. Haymaker uh, was unique at the time as well. Haymaker and and Phalanx as well. Yeah, so they they have those. They sort of have that, but of course, then you still have all the the non unique feats, and that the fact that they have those choices there means it sort of invalidates the unique. Feet loadouts because may I may I raise a counterpoint to this? Oh yeah, go ahead. I actually oh, okay. I I think most of the feats in this game could totally be. I think the three feet system honestly is like really smart for this game. Only if the feats are balanced. The chat. Very very like heavy asterisks. Like they have to be balanced, and they're not balancing them. Like yes, we have. This is the almost fifth year of smoke bomb. <laughs> of slippery. Mm, and yeah. Keep this in mind. Like oh. as much as much of a meme as it is, Smoke Bomb has been completely ruining the games ever since its inception, and or like its its first change, I should say, because at first it was just a really bad feat. But like it's in the same game as something like Slippery. Like there there is a big issue when like because it seems like the feat team is either like. Uh, I don't know, there's like one person on it or something that only works on a new character or there's like, they, they just don't communicate with the rest of the team. Obviously, I don't want to make like assumptions. I don't work at Ubisoft, but like you get what I mean. Yeah, when yeah, when no, you I have agree. feats that, when you have like Shaolin that, uh, Shaolin, sorry, Kyoshin that comes out with like a nearly useless unique tier 3 only months 
after the absolute fucking abomination that was Griffin on release. On Warmonger like, was on release, but yeah. I mean, yeah, like, but like Griffin feats on release were absolutely like incredible. Like it was insane. They right after they nerfed every like healing feat, they come out with like this monster that just takes over every game. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, the yeah. point is they are clearly out of touch. Like unlike something like um, I, I like the ideas of some of the feet though. Like Warmonger and Kyoshin, I think are really interesting. I think they're just getting overall really good at making feats. Like all the year three characters have cool feats. Um, but um, they they're just like out of touch sometimes, and it, it's kind of like the map designers. The map designers are getting better. Okay, I let's, believe. let's not get too far into the weeds. Sorry, sorry, go on. Yeah, yeah, fair. <laughs> We we've got three minutes left, so if you want to oh, round no. up your, your thought, round up your thought, and we'll start heading off for the end. All right, right, right. Fe- feats are like grossly like either overpowered or underpowered, and makes it really not fun to watch because it ends up in being like the the final fights end up being very similar. Yeah, that that's mm, the gist okay. of it, or right, one sided. Yeah. So I think as a summary, like while the higher end stuff or the high tower stuff we were talking about of you know engagement trying to keep people flowing into the game is a good idea would people be in agreement that perhaps it's more fundamental problems that could be causing or holding back the game from being a spectator sport absolutely yay nay well of course you would agree you're the one who brought the point up (laughs) (laughs) i'm asking the others no one was answering sorry (laughs) i don't I agree to some, to some extent, not entirely, but um, I but uh, I you know want to hear other people's other people's thoughts as well, because otherwise it's just me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I I honestly don't know how I feel about it. Of course, the game has plenty of problems with you know tutorials and teaching players and explaining concepts. You know, we talked about like revenge and stuff, but I I, I don't know. I feel like it's also quite a bit on, uh, you know, convincing oh, yes. players to watch these broadcasts and pay attention, not just watch them for the drops and try and figure out what's going on because it's not always easy and especially with you know the dominion series casters that don't have the highest level of knowledge even though they're great casters and are doing a great job uh, there's not as much explanation for what's going on in the matches and it, it i think it probably isn't helping a ton to get players involved yeah i think they need to improve i mean yeah i think if we can cut summary of things that uh, in addition to anything else they do to improve engagement um, and you know, imp- given the story, they need to improve learning tools so people actually know what they're 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 watching and what they're what they're doing. They need to improve uh, the base game mechanics that are that make the game unenjoyable to watch and to play. Um, and they need to uh, was it you know give a, a better route into these things as well as not just from, not just from from watching but also from from uh, from f- f- participating, and there needs to be a, a smoother route into that via things like yeah. making customs able to, you know, get XP and and, I mean, and stop this, separate. This also goes straight into what Jones just mentioned because, like, how is it? It's really hard to be a caster because you have to be really good at the game to understand everything that's going on, and it's that's just it's hard to do. Yeah, like, yeah, because because learning in the game is so hard, it's lo- so hard to learn the game. Uh, exactly. and there's so few resources for it that uh, uh, yeah, it's hard, difficult to difficult to reach that 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 point of understanding, which allows you to then express that understanding to other people. Um, okay, well, uh, if anybody else has got some closing questions or closing thoughts, um, you know, other than it is difficult to learn this game, that's why we're here. And come along to the hey, day. transitions. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, we're doing doing our best to help. So, uh, other than that, um, yeah. Any other, any anybody else got any things they want to say before we before we sign off for this evening? Are I going to get some tweet? And then, uh, yes, I I do have a question for Antonio here, if he's still here. Oh yeah, hey Hello. Antonio. Hello. Um, I saw your um little comments with Rawit when he said why Zerk is replacing Warlord or something. Can you um? Uh, put more emphasis on what Zerk does, what Warlord does, but better. Because I saw, I saw that little comment. If that was you, of course, in Toet's chat. I mean, the issue with Warlord now is the fact that like he gets destroyed by unblockables, as everyone noticed. Like 
Warlord doesn't have like a main role in team fights. Like everyone noticed that. Because like Shubogi can like basically destroy him if he does an unblockable uh, an unblockable not locked on him. So like he tries to he makes a re he need, Warlord needs to make a read whether the whether the Shugoki is going to land the unblockable, so he needs to dodge. But then if the Shugoki faints the unblockable, gets the GP on the Warlord, gets a Demon Ball, and if there is a, either a JJ or a Simba or even a Berserker around the Shugoki, you literally get blown up. And you didn't do anything in that fight. You, you literally survive for like 10 seconds, maybe. Maybe 15. Where, like, Berserker in this case can just do a dodge light. Okay, maybe he's going to need a, like, a heavy parry. A light parry, sorry, but... It's still better than being blown up in a team fight, or he can just a lock light on the Shugoki so he doesn't get punished, but he also deals damage. Which with the new update, though, with the new changes on Berserker, where like dodge light is enhanced, you you have more opportunities to enter your mix up, to enter your hyper armor heavies, to enter your combo heavies, which deal more damage than normal. And you also have cancel. Uh, you can cancel your recovery from the dodge heavies, the do the lights. You have the backstep light, which is also a good tool to actually bait out like bashes and like, or even headbutts from the shugoki, or even heavies from the the, the zones from the simba to heal. You also have a good matchup against JG because you can uh, safely punish him if he goes for a backstep heavy to Sifu, where Warlord has to like make two, three good reads to actually be able to punish uh, JG, which is not safe at all. And also, like, uh, damage-wise, like, I, f I feel like Berserker does a better job than Warlord at dealing damage right now, since he has a much better uh, opening than Warlord. The, basically, like, the main difference between Warlord and Berserker is the fact that, like, Berserker has a dodge attack, which is safer than a dodge, and that's it. Yeah. Everybody needs dodge attacks. Yeah. I think Crush and Charge loses the value right now? Definitely. Yeah. There is no like if you want to run World of Dolly for crashing charge, I think it's a waste of spot for per second. Or even Gladiator. Gladiator is much better than uh than Warlord. Guys, time's up. Oh, well, that's alright. <laughs> we've always we've often gone nice summary. Time. After yeah, yeah. Thank, uh, you, Antonio. thank you much for that inf info on uh, uh on Berserker. I hope we see more of Berserker in the I don't know, are, are Nemesis running Berserker as well now? Or uh, I do believe Barak is gonna try Berserker. Well, I mean, no I mean he, he's coming back home, you know. So I hope yeah. I hope they do. Um, Hopefully, he's gonna stop the vacation soon, and he's gonna <laughs> be able to fucking play. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm excited to see how it comes out, turns out in the majors, um, and yeah. again, also the next qualifiers, which are next week, which you can still enter, by the way, if you are if you are wanting to. Um, anybody who's watching, but maybe Berserker is meta now. We'll find out, Kempo. So. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Eric, for joining. Thanks so much, Verb, for like taking the lead on this as well. Happy and, resist. And Jones and Weebu and Timo for being here as well and watching on Twitch rather than watching in the Discord. <laughs> and Stag for the production, of course. And Stag, again, thanks for the production and everything. Um, well, so thank you all for to tuning in. Um, hope to see you next week. We'll go and do another one on Thursday. Don't know what this topic will be on because I'm kind of ad hoc and disorganized with my life. So I don't know what we've decided. But you know, if you've got something that you particularly are interested in and want to to see um hit or hit here talk about then you know let, hit me up and let me know um and i'll do my best we can probably we can you know we can't we i'm happy to hear ideas from anybody else and I'm sure, I'm yeah sure, i'm sure we'll come up, up with something until Thursday. but yeah yeah i think we should i think we should end now we're five minutes yeah all right well thank you time. you're yeah, all free now thanks so much for coming and have <laughs> a great evening everybody and hope you watch the north american tournament which will be streamed somewhere i'm sure um, i don't know if norcos is going to be streaming it i hope he does but um he if not i'm sure somebody will be he's live up, right but... now yeah yeah he's live right now okay so go oh let, let's go and um do i don't know how to do it on twitch yeah go and do a raid over to norcos so we can really watch the north american tournament um okay, and again good. thanks so much for joining right bye goodbye everyone right